Today we have a special guest, Barb Mitchell. She is a broadcast journalist from Calgary, Canada. Barb is most recognized for her more than 22 years in the news business where she worked as a national and local reporter, news anchor, morning show host, and documentary producer for Global TV, City TV, Shaw TV, and CFCN Television in Calgary. After nine years getting up far too early to host the morning television show, Barb branched out into acting and is, has enjoyed working for both film and theater. Uh, she also lends her voice to many animated series and commercials and continues to write and produce for television and corporate clients. Welcome to the show, Barb. Thanks for having me, Kirsten. So, Barb, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I have to admit, uh, it's actually quite surreal for me to be, uh, you know, in this position interviewing you, uh, a seasoned reporter and interviewer yourself. Um, but I, I really do appreciate the opportunity to question you here on, on some of your techniques. Well, no problem. I'm glad to share them. Uh, so uh, now I do have a couple questions uh, here to ask. First of all, uh, you know, what got you interested in the whole idea of journalism in the first place? Well, I actually got into it uh, ages ago when I was involved in modeling and the Miss Calgary uh, con contest. And uh, I met Daryl Jans years and years ago. And he uh, was the six o'clock news anchor for CFCN at the time. And he gave me a full tour of the station. And I just, I found it a really exciting place. And I, at that time, I was, you know, I'd recently graduated high school. I was looking for a career that might interest me, and it just really sparked my interest. And so I researched it a bit, and I ended up going to SAIT and taking their uh, broadcast journalism program and graduated, and I actually got my first job at CFC. And so it, it was very, very great to dive right into a big market right out of school. Wow, I mean, and that was, that was almost like an instant break into the industry. Yeah, no, it worked out really well. It was, you know, some of those things with jobs, you just hear about a position opening before it's posted, and I managed to go and, and talk to the people and get my resume in, and they go, yeah, actually, we do need someone. We hadn't even thought about posting it yet, yeah. so it worked out. Fantastic. So, uh, you know, what were some of the most interesting people you've interviewed over your career? Oh, gosh, I've interviewed so many people, it's hard to remember them all. Um, all, I mean, I've interviewed prime ministers and premiers, and I've interviewed um, Robert Thirsk and Chris Hadfield, who are astronauts. I interviewed them from the space shuttle. I interviewed um, Alan Hobson and Jamie Clark, and that, that was the very first broadcast at Everest uh, Base Camp when they were climbing Mount Everest, and they're uh, two climbers from Calgary. Um, I went on the election uh, tour with Preston Manning in 92 and we were on the plane with all the reporters that was really exciting uh, covered the 88 Olympics in Calgary so lots of lots that of great must have been quite a highlight as well uh, um, now uh, you spent most of your career uh, from what I understand on uh, the breakfast show uh, in Calgary yeah and uh, you know I'm, I'm sure a lot of my uh, my audience is curious um, exactly, uh, you know, how do the guests that appeared on your show actually get on a list or actually get found to actually be interviewed uh, on, your, on a show like The Breakfast Show or for any show uh, similar to that, uh, for, for matter of fact? Well, there are many different types of guests. I mean, there's when there's breaking news, quite often we'll seek out representatives of the people involved, whether it's a corporation's PR person or something like that. But there are also the regular guests that we have to fill content. And every TV show, radio show has people like that because they're reliable. They will bring interesting, newsworthy um, points for the viewers. And the way that they're found is there's a variety of, of options. Some of them are through sales. so. Sometimes if you buy advertising, part of your package will be included that you are you will get some interviews included in that. Uh, you know, sales has gone into news quite a bit now. It never used to be that way, but but now there's a lot of interplay between the sales department, the commercial production department and news. Um, so that's one option, but there's a lot of ways of getting free advertising and getting on the news as well. If you have expertise in a specific field, that you can say you are an expert in, you're knowledgeable, you're credible, you have credentials that you can you know, show that you know what you're talking about. Um, 
pretty much anybody can get in there. It's a matter of getting the ear of the producers and the reporters and the people that are putting together the shows. So, for example, if say you're a financial expert or something like that, um, you could be calling the stations and letting them know, hi, I'm so and so, I'm with this financial group and I have an expertise in this area. If you're ever interested in a comment on perspective on the market or whatever it might be, here's my number, I'd be glad to talk to you. So it's, it's a matter of calling them, making that initial connection, or you can email or you can also just send out press releases. If there's some big event happening in the city, in the world or whatever, you can write up a press release issuing your statement and your perspective. You know, um, you know, we predict that the housing market in Calgary is going to really impact this segment of society or whatever. And you can write up a press release, have your contact information. And sometimes those press releases will spark, if you, you get them on a regular basis in the newsroom, you go, hey, oh, this guy really has a lot to say. Uh, you know, and then we'll, we might phone and interview you over the phone see if you're intelligent, if you're credible, if you can come up with newsworthy mm. ideas and uh, we might try you out for an interview and if it works well, they bring the people back. So it, it can be a very great thing for promoting your own business, for raising your own personal profile, but you have to do your yeah. homework. You have to know the people in town that would be interested in it. Say, like I said, if you're a financial person, you should know yep. all of the financial reporters research that whether it's the newspaper people the radio people or the tv people and know who to direct that information to um it's also about being able to come up with ideas that are news friendly so think from the viewer's perspective what do people want to know um because quite often if you commit to becoming a regular contributor to a show you're the one that has to basically produce those segments you have to come up with the ideas and say you know, this week I'd like to talk about, you know, um, getting your first mortgage for a young couple or, you know, this week I want to talk about this and you, you would have to organize those and submit them to the producer and they would either say, oh, that's a good idea or, mm, I don't know, can you think of something better that's more interesting or more newsworthy because of, you know, something happening in the world that is, is pertinent. So it, it's working directly with the people involved in producing these shows, but it's that initial contact. You know, you have you have to get out there, make the contacts, and make sure that you are selling yourself in a very professional, yeah. intelligent, credible yeah. manner. And so, so if I understand you correctly, kind of almost a little bit of spoon feeding does help in that process. So preparing and actually delivering the information ahead of time, um, you're almost selling uh, almost like a, a, a test run ahead of the interview. Yeah. No, I mean it does help because. Uh, as we know, the, the whole broadcasting news industry, everybody's being downsized. Mm -hmm. So there's fewer mm -hmm. staff to prepare segments. There's few, you know, everybody's in yep. a crunch. So if you can assist in them producing a good TV friendly informational yep. segment that is going to make them look mm -hmm. good, you know, and make you look good in the process, everybody comes out happy, right? So you, you just have to prepare. You have to think of what you are capable of speaking on, you know, uh, what uh, advice you are qualified to hand out to people, you know, whether you own a travel business or whether you own yeah. whatever, uh, you know, uh, there's medical experts, there's financial experts, there's, you know, decorating mm -hmm. experts, there's all kinds of people that end up on TV promoting their own businesses. And it's really just a matter of being confident, credible, professional, and, you know, making those contacts. Great tips. Um, what now? Let's just get to the interview. So let's, now, let's say you've 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 got your first interview. Um, obviously, you've prepared for it. You know what you're dealing with. Uh, any tips on on how to properly act during an interview? Basically, the number one thing is to be yourself. Think about what you're saying. Listen to what the other person's saying and try to let go of all of those other thoughts in your head about how do I look, what do people think about me, and all those things that create stress. Because if you can just focus on the task, focus on what you're saying, the advice you're giving, and the questions that you're receiving, you'll do far better at, at just being yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Don't try to put on a false image because that will be obvious on the air. You'll get nervous or you will look you know, insincere. 
Um, you have to be prepared for questions that maybe aren't on the list of questions that you or the reporter prepared. Because sometimes shows can be very loose and they may just pull something out of the hat to ask you. So you have to be ready for just about anything. Preparation is key. You know, if you know your subject, you know what you're going to talk about, um, have it up here. Don't have cue cards, don't have a lot of notes. You should be able to just riff on these ideas. Um, you know, and it, they're short interviews generally is what you're doing. They're like two or three minutes yeah. long. So they go over like that. So it's really a matter of preparing like five points at the most and know the details about those mm -hmm. points inside and out. And, you know, dress professionally. Um, you know, ladies don't wear too much makeup, look professional, um, you know, and, and have good manners and be happy and smile and, and that's about yeah. it. And, and I imagine that, that plays to that sort of the entertainment factor, which is people who watch these shows want to get to know who the guest is as much as the information mm -hmm. they're delivering. Absolutely, especially with television because it's so much uh, an image-driven media is that if, if you look nervous, people feel sorry for you. If you look confident and happy and that you're enjoying yourself, people will relax and they'll be drawn in more and they'll, you know, relate to you a little bit better. Well, you know, let's uh, let's start talking. Uh, let's stop asking questions about uh, what uh, the past. Uh, let's let's talk about just a little bit of the future because I'm kind of curious as well. I mean, you've been involved in uh, in acting now for a while, uh, and uh, you've uh, t taken on quite a challenging role. I, I, I saw in your bio that uh, you actually played the uh, infamous Mrs. Robinson in uh, the Calgary rendition of The Graduate. Um, <laughs> that's that's quite a, a, a that, that's quite a feat, actually. I congratulate you on that one. Well, it was. It was kind of my initiation into acting. You know, I w decided I wanted to get into acting, and I'd taken some classes and. Uh, did the big dive into the graduate is like so you want to be an actress okay well you got to get up on stage and you know, seduce Benjamin you know and and uh, it was a great challenge it was a lot of fun and uh, live theater is very exciting I never expected I'd be doing as much theater as I do but I love it but I but I also do film and I do voiceover work as well so uh, it's great. I thought go big or go home, and the acting gig has worked out really well for me. It keeps me pretty busy. Yeah, and it's a, it's a testament to the fact that uh, you know when you do enter into a new realm or a new industry or a new profession, uh, it's always important to stick your neck out a little bit and try something challenging and make a mark as that first impression. Absolutely, I was scared to death, <laughs> but I just dove into yeah, the pool. Well, why you know? should you? Why should you be <laughs> and scared? It, and it you, you've, you've been on TV for years, but it's, I guess it's just different, right? Yeah, yeah. No, you you can get stuck in your one little rut, but uh, you've got to do things that scare yourself every once in a while, and you'll you'll find that you grow more. Well, Barb, thank you very much for uh, for taking time out uh, uh, to in, to be interviewed here. I know you're busy, have many things on the go, uh, and you've you've picked up. We picked up on some great pointers, and I really appreciate it. No problem, and I encourage everybody to get out there and uh, get their name out there and and see what you can drum up because there's a lot of Opportunity well, today. hopefully we can have you on the show again sometime uh, real soon. No problem. Thanks. Thank you very much for joining. We've been speaking with uh, actor, speaker, and reporter, host, Barb Mitchell. Uh, you can find out more information about her by Googling her name uh, or visiting imdb.com, and she has her profile on there. Thanks for joining, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.